<laughs> Who? The unemployed me? <laughs> well, okay, folks. It's uh, the magic witching hour of 1230. So this week's meeting is called into session. Uh, Alan, fire up the slide deck. Here it comes. Here it comes. Skip over that one. Won't have to see that again. All right. Let's see. Um, Stephen, how about you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? It's been a while since we've had you do that. Stephen, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, nation indivisible, both liberty and justice for all. for all. That's tough to do with an echo. Okay. Plenty enough echoes. Yeah. Okay. On to the songsters, and Alan promises me that we have a song this week. Let's go, go guys. I'm unmuting him. Hold on just a second. Sorry for the delay. Alan, you're muted. I don't know how that happened. Alan, unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. What happened last week, Mike and Stu had put together a wonderful rendition of the song they were going to present. But with technical difficulties, it didn't get presented. So I asked if it would be all right if we presented it this week. So here it is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. into music? What? Alan, you're running crazy. Back There you go. Uh, we thought for the President's graphics, we'd run through a few more goofy t-shirts. Last week was a tease. These actually come to us from Don Wentz, whom I don't see today. So maybe he's off on a cruise somewhere. So Alan, you can just flick through these. Some are good. They end with what I still think is the best one. Okay? You can read them. Flick it by Alan. I like this. Your president has thought of this several times. This is good. Allow the bottle to breathe. If it doesn't look like it's breathing, give it mouth to mouth. I think that's nice. Uh, the next one. I have this. Mary got it for me. I thought growing old would take longer. It didn't. Many of you can have this shirt. Uh, I like this. I'm going to stop asking how dumb can you get. People seem to be taking it as a challenge. I don't know where you wear these things. And next to the next one, 
this was last week's, which is truly fine. I have sex daily, uh, dyslexia. Whoever thought of that is genius with the English language. Okay, so that's the end of the person's graphic for a year. Marty Plone, you're up for thought for the day. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Well, with COVID-19 and being sheltered in, I find myself watching a lot of television and a lot of the news channels, the cable news channels, and being a Democrat, I watch MSNBC and CNN. And when they're interviewing other people, they're interviewing them at their homes now, and I swear 90% of them, they have bookshelves in the back of them at their homes. And I got thinking, why do these people keep all these books? And what happens to those books when they pass away? Uh, it becomes a dilemma for your heirs to get rid of them. And you can't give them to libraries. A lot of those books are decades old. I don't have any books in my home. I buy a book and I buy a lot, but I give them to the library after I'm done. And so I would encourage you folks who uh, hoard books to think about when you buy a new book to donate it to the library. And that's my thought for the day. That's a good thought, Marty. I, I do that differently. I have a book and then I'm a book pusher. I just send it off to other people and figure here I'll never see it again. All right. Uh, Kubiak, are you okay? I oh, was hiding my books book. from Marty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think we all need to upgrade so we can have fake backgrounds if we're going to keep doing this for a while. Jay, be a we'll have to start giving road prizes. For fake backgrounds. Say, Marty, do you notice you've got something green on your body? That's my friend Teddy. This guy is the most lovable right. parrot ever. He just adores me wherever I go. He's with me. If I go outside and sit in my patio, he comes right out and on my shoulder. He's just a great, great uh, friend. I want to come out one thing before I go. I just finished a great book that just came out. It was written by Chris Wallace, and it's the story of the last 116 days before the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan and what President Truman went through and the agonizing things that he went through to make that decision to use it or not. So uh, if you want a really, really fantastic story, uh, get the book. It's called, I forget the name, but it's written by Chris Wallace about the last 116 days before the bomb was dropped. And I'm done. What's the title? Well, while he comes back, Glenn Kubiak is our Zoom host. Spur reporter is Trish Monroe, who is there lurking, as she put it. I like that very much. Audio has lived with me for a year and done very well. Countdown to 1945. That's that's the name of the book. Thank you. Yeah, well written. Mary doesn't let me buy more than about three. A week. Wonderful story. And um, now Rungi, and then of course Don Wentz is the Spur publisher, but Don doesn't seem to be with us today. Okay, uh, moving on to visiting Rotarians. I know we have at least one. I saw Lee. Introduce yourself, Lee. Don't hide, Lee. We know you're there. Okay, I finally unmuted. I <laughs> I don't have a mouse and it's very difficult. The arrow doesn't want to move sometimes, the cursor. Uh, Lee Denlinger, assistant governor for another, what, uh, 13 days or whatever uh, of Area 4. Delighted to be joining you and hearing it all about uh, Jay's year. Thank you. Rotary okay. Club of Dublin. Thank you. Any other visiting Rotarians? You know, Lee, I, I said we're going to turn you into the uh, electric uh, Bob Tucknot because you're showing up so much, and you're always welcome. Pleasure to have you. Any other Rotarians? Okay, no guests of Rotarians. My wife Mary is here lurking behind me to see what foolishness I did this year, uh, although she has seen the slides. Any, any other guests? Non-Rotarian guests? Okay, 
Uh, we're going to move on to announcements. David Rounds asked for permission to make a brag and said he would pay a fine. So here you go, David. The meter is running. All right. So, you know, I, I, I turned 70 today and we were going to have a big party, but nobody was going to come. And then we, um, then COVID came and nobody was definitely going to come. So we, um, uh, talked about it and we thought, well, what do we do? Well, let's go buy a motorcycle. So my wife bought me a motorcycle for my birthday. And I thought I would pay a fine for that. If you want to see it, there it is out in front of my house. And I will um, give $100 to the club and $100 to the music scholarship for that. Thank you. Thank you. Is is this thought at age 70 to be a good hobby to learn for the first time? No, no, it's not the first time, Jay. No, this is, this is my fourth motorcycle. I just haven't had one recently. Okay. Yeah. Uh, David, don't right. turn 70. It's not worth it. Uh, think about it. Do it again next year. <laughs> <laughs> good idea. Good idea. Okay. I'll th I'm picking on something for 75 now. So. And then... Goud, there's a slide. Goud made an offer. Are you here to describe your offer, Goud? No. In the next 25 days, or no, up till the 25th of this month, Goud has offered to match contributions to, to RFI and to, um, I think, to our restricted funds at the district. So that's, that's really quite wonderful. Uh, Goud, remember, stimulated, bra stimulated Braggs last week when he brought the subject up. So we're going to institutionalize brags going forward. I think Carolyn and Ken will count on that. Well, that said, in plenty of good time, so I can finish early, let's go to my slides and I'll talk about my year. Oh yes, next week, mutiny, same week, same time, same place. Uh, we're going to have an electronic mutiny, which is an interesting idea. I'd kind of like that picture for my wall, I'll know if I could get it. Carolyn will take over, and I've tried not to break the club for her. Okay? Step up, Alan. Okay. This is my rotary year, or what could go wrong. Um, I want to make you laugh, and I want to make you be serious both. So, as you know, I rode into town looking cool and in charge. Uh, I always have a phrase as a leader. It's what, it's what I call the illusion of control. When you start a project or start a new organization, you actually think you have the reins in your hands. You'll notice if you look carefully at Lulu there, I don't have any reins in my hands, which is sort of what the year felt by. Let's go. Alan, your mouse is slow. Let me start with the important things. Um, it's no small thing to run a big club. This is over 100 members. Back up, Alan. Now you're running wild on me. Um, some technical difficulties. Try the one in the middle, Alan. All right. It was a pleasure to have your trust and friendship. Uh, all my good friends are at Rotary at this age. Um, back again, Alan. It's an honor to represent you in this town, and the president does to get to do that. And I must say, I've mentioned this before, I was asked to speak at Leo Croce's memorial service, which was an honor I did not expect. And it was the emotional high of the year for me. Uh, it was not a small crowd, three or four hundred people. Um, I wasn't sure how it would work out. And I was more than a little nervous going in. And Pam hadn't explained to me a thing I didn't know because I, although I've been speaking in the public for 50 years, I'd never spoken at an Italian funeral. And no one explained to me that they opened the bar before the service. So it turned out to be a good, la a good crowd. It was a, a great talk. I had a good time. It was a great service. I think we've had some laughter and some sorrow together this year. Uh, we've certainly lost a couple of people we didn't want to lose, Sue Coates, and we lost Leo. This club is part of what makes Livermore unique. We're out at the far end here of Lee's district, and I think it's pretty good. 
And to use an old baseball expression, we hit above our weight. Uh, we do very well. So let me go to some personal stuff just for fun. Um, next slide, Alan. We did good projects. I was proud of, whoop, okay, you've seen Sunflower Hill a couple times. We had a great two day stint building, uh, building tables for them. We built storage shelves for our new warehouse space. For those of you not been there, you ought to visit. And we left the wretched old shed out on Tesla. This is what the crew looked like. Uh, you notice these are all retired Sandia and Livermore lab scientists and engineers. So there's some uncertainty. But if you step to the next slide, You must have quite a delay in getting these slides. Nobody got injured. Here we are. But after JR showed up and we had one guy who really could lead and work like this, it went very fast. Now, you may notice Wins is holding a tool. We all are allegedly tool users. JR showed up with the only tool we really needed, which was a small sledgehammer, which he explains he uses on the electronics in the cars he repairs. So. He taught us quite a lot of stuff we didn't know. We thought that was fun. Uh, if you go ahead, Alan, I did some family stuff as well. I've, I've shown some of these pictures to some of you. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. One more thing. Part of the fun is special relationships with local entrepreneurs. And of course, here's a special entrepreneur and a special relationship. I, I really like this picture. John Evan is, is one of our heroes, a, a nice uh, I can't remember October or February day. Got to go out there and taste uh, taste two years ago's wine of mine as it came out of the barrels to be bottled. So it was fun. Okay, next. <clears throat> I learned from Kathy Coyle and I went home. Kathy taught us about Saskatchewan. Well, where I was born was in the Texas Panhandle, not Saskatchewan. This little town of Haskell is now big enough to have two water towers. This is the new water tower. Interestingly, it's down to 3,000 people from the 5,000 at its peak in the 1940s. And instead of cotton and cattle, it now most probably grows wind farms and solar farms. It's astonishing. To the north of town, the wind farms run from horizon to horizon south of town, the solar farms run from horizon to horizon, and it's a hopping place because those projects have brought in several hundred bright young men and women in good technical jobs. It's a small town. It invested in its public schools, and so it's a great place to start and raise your family, and it's a hopping place. Uh, in a county whose total population is 5,000 now, it's a little terrifying to go out and drive around and look at the small towns 10 and 15 miles out, which made up, you know, part of the market economy. Haskell's the county seat. All the small towns are dead. Uh, they might have 40% of the houses occupied. It's just quite a shock. Uh, one of the theories for the history book I'll never write is I think one unexpected thing that killed lots of small agriculture in places like the Texas Panhandle was the GI Bill because the sons and daughters came home from World War II and they didn't have to take the farm. They could go to Texas or Texas A&M or a state college or SMU or Baylor and become an engineer or an attorney or a doctor. And so I think a good bit of the next generation was able to walk away in the 40s to mid 50s under the GI Bill. And you see it out there. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Alan, uh, I did take my some family with me. Um, this is my daughter, Kathy, and her sons, Malcolm and David. <clears throat> this is at one of two farms we still own. <clears throat> this is what it's like to live about 10 miles outside of town on dirt roads. Uh, that farm is about 120 acres. The guy that farms it is a tenant farmer, uh, raises cattle and grows cotton there. I'll show you the cattle in a minute. But to survive, he works as a roughneck in the oil fields. And so I don't quite know what he's going to do. Uh, my brothers and cousins and I own two of these places, one about 120 acres and one about 100 acres. And since my youngest brother is a petroleum attorney, he says, never sell, never sell, never sell. And the next slide will show you why. Um, oh no, 
First, the cattle. Next slide. This is the historical site, right? There are the cattle. Uh, I'd not seen that some of these people use cattle or herd their cattle with goats. This is the one that was interesting to me. This is an oil well left from the 30s on that piece of land, now abandoned, but that oil well got my mother's family through the depression. Uh, it's what oil people call a stripper well. It might have produced 10 to 20 barrels a day, but it did it for about 30 years. And so that, uh, that helped carry a family. Uh, I wasn't willing to jump the fence and wade through the rattlesnakes to get any closer. I doubt that that pump jack has moved in 40 or 45 years. And that's our grandson, uh, David. Uh, Alan pointed out he did not know that Tabasco was a Texas product. And I had to explain to him that was one of the secrets of the oil business. Tabasco actually comes from oil wells. Mary and I had a fun year. When you have a vineyard, you're always looking for a new way to do decorations. So we decorated a, a vine this year. Uh, December is about the time you begin thinking about pruning. So we went out and pruned one of our 350 and decorated it. And we thought, well, if it's Christmas, we should have elves. The neighbors always look at us strangely when we do things like this. They're not, uh, they're not accustomed to this sort of behavior. But we had a good time with that. Next, Alan. We had a lot of accomplishments this year. Um, we expanded the size of the grants and the Mugit Scholarship Program, and we were rewarded with good proposals and good candidates. And I think what was most important, happy members, the members of the club that have years invested in both those programs were glad to have more resources. They were responsible in their use. I'm glad that the club will, you know, you can't promise future years money, but the club club will try to keep things funded at that rate. I think that's going to be really very, very nice going forward. <clears throat> As you know, we made a large grant to Stanford Health Valley Care to help them prepare what certainly looks like a long haul against the coronavirus. The board and you were willing to do this a couple of months ago. Uh, I think all of us figured there's going to be, if not a surge, at least a continuing large number of these cases. And we now are lucky enough to live in a community that's well prepared. We help them outfit a dozen rooms to be intensive care rooms if this blooms again. And finally, for the club, our morale and attendance is high and we still have new members joining. Uh, so we've stayed level and with new members, we've probably gotten a little bit younger, which is a good thing because if you look around us at meetings, I think Glenn may know the number better than I or John Hudson will, the average age is something like 73 in our club. So it's nice to have the young people come in. As I said before, uh, I think we hit above our weight. We're, we're doing very well in this town. Okay, Alan. <clears throat> and then along came the virus. Uh, midway through my year when I sort of thought we were in control or at least obeying my illusion of command control and the coronavirus came and changed our lives in almost no time. Uh, next, Alan. We astonishingly shifted on a week's notice to electronic meetings. And I'll be very frank, I doubted it could be done. I was terrified. What I didn't know was that Glenn Kubiak had been sandbagging me on this issue and that he had run meetings like this for five years when he was the deputy director for operation or the COO at uh, the Berkeley lab. What's pleasing is that our attendance and enthusiasm have remained high. I think our record is well into the 80s. Uh, the board has responded well to a strategic session we had last month, trying to anticipate our future needs and operational style. And as I said early before we started, it's very hard to know the rules against which we will work uh, because they're, I think, gonna be made up in the short term as we go forward. You all have stayed enthusiastic and, and involved in the club, which I really appreciate. Uh, as you noticed in the last month, we were able to call on city leaders for outstanding programs. Kelly Bowers, Mark Roberts, and Matt Fusi all gave us a great look at what they're doing and how they're trying to get themselves ready for the future. And what pleases me is it is easy in this format to get guests to attend. 
if you ask somebody to come to Rotary, there's the fear of, gee, I'll be a stranger in a room full of, big room full of people. They will look at me. What will I think? Uh, they're perfectly happy to come electronically. The risk to being a visitor is much, much smaller. And I've been pleased to see how many people that I have invited actually came. And they understand that recruitment will follow as sure as rain. Uh, but I think having seen us in this format, they will be interestingly involved in our future formats. Okay, next. So here's the best part of this job. I get to give awards. Um, we have three, the Rotarian of the Quarter, the Rotarian of the Year, and the John Shirley Award. And I have stressed Alan with the graphics for each of these. So first, roll the drums, and then Alan, the Rotarian of the Quarter. Uh, this is a double award to our crabs, to Don Wentz and Bob Collin for the perfect job they did putting on the crab feed. Um, Bob was right to ask, do we have a plan for next year? And I was answer, and honest, no. But I think the board under Carolyn will develop several plans <coughs> and probably by November or so, which is I suspect commitment time to buying crab, we'll have an idea of what to do. I certainly don't want us to lose something that's uh, this important to tradition. Then can we go to Rotarian of the Year? And I'm proud of Alan for this graphic. It was a commissioned graphic. Here we are, Glenn Kubiak, who led us over the River Jordan to the promised land of Zoom. Uh, you may recognize Charlton Heston there. That's not Charlton Heston, that's Glenn Kubiak, okay? Copies of this picture will be available. Um, Alan, I think, exceeded himself here. It was very good. Glenn, I am immensely appreciative. I think that one accomplishment has um, really made this club look good to its members and to the public venue. It was just seamless. And as I said, I could never have imagined it. And then finally, the John Shirley Award goes to Pat Coyle uh, for heroic social efforts. Pat has put more energy into both local and international activities this year than I think one could ever see. It is truly service above self. And the John Shirley Award is primarily focused on international activities and making Rotary stand out. I wanted a picture of Pat as a big white hunter. Uh, we couldn't find this. So this actually used to be Teddy Roosevelt. But I think <laughs> Pat looks pretty damn dashing in that photo. So Alan, this is another one we're going to keep. If, if we ever have walls again, we'll have to hang some of these on walls for a few years. All right. Um, I think I'm about ready to wrap it up. What do I have left? What the next year brings. Um, if our past was the old hotel, I think our future may well be at the Robert Livermore Center. Glenn's gone out and looked at it. When I look at the hotel site and I look at what's around it, one word jumps into my mind, and that word is condos. Uh, that's one of the older hotels in town. I'm not sure the there's a business plan that would bring it up. It's business plan, which depended upon visitors to the outlet mall, may be broken. Uh, I don't think we want to wait on them. I don't think we want to be hostage to them. So the board in its discussion agreed we should try to migrate to hybrid meetings when possible. Hybrid meeting would be one where some of us get to meet for lunch and the rest attend electronically. Uh, this means having a venue that can support the electronics. It means having a venue in which we can get catered lunch and space to uh, have 40 or 50 people in the room under the rules. And then we'll rotate. If you didn't get to go to lunch this week, you get to go to lunch next week. Glenn and Matt Fousey are looking at how we can do this. There's several rooms at the Robert Livermore Community Center that look to me like they would be suitable for this sort of thing. Uh, we don't know when we can do it and how we can do it. Glenn is accumulating uh, bids from, from uh, caterers. And so this will transition into next year with Carol and leading her board to make this decision as to see when we can do it. So I'm going to close by saying I hand over to Carol and very proud of the year we have. I'm proud of the difficulties you've overcome. And I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. I look forward to being a past president. Thank you, Jay.
Uh, Jay, is the, is the old ho is the hotel gone now? I mean, have they sold it? No, it's, it's not gone, Ted, but it's closed, locked down. Uh, you're familiar with this phrase from government activities, cold, dark, and dry. Uh -huh. um, I just look at it, and I, I seeing it come up is small. Uh, Glenn probably knows better numbers than I, but I'm sure we were a nice-to-have economic user of the hotel, but we weren't what was keeping them alive. I think what was keeping them alive were the busloads and busloads of people from mainland China who are coming to go to the malls. And mm. I'm that business plan is probably broken for longer than we want to wait to get back into a building. I mean, I wish them no ill. I just am, am used to anticipating downsides and things. What about all our, our flags and all our, our belongings? Those have been picked up. No, not, not yet. Uh, we will be going over there to get them. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had done it. Yeah. Not yet. Uh, we, we will have an arrangement to go get all of, the, all of our historical stuff and move it to the storage space we have, at which point, Glenn, I suspect the storage space will be full, right? Yeah, so I'll, I've got a pickup truck. I will put out a, a request for one pair of hands to help me load it from the hotel. They've been very hard to get a hold of. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll go out there and we'll transfer it to the storage. Um, so. Remember the American flag out there that they used is our flag, is the club's flag. Thanks, Ed. I'll, I'll take a note. Thank you. I have all the electronic stuff. Uh, it's been our policy not to store it at the hotel because it's expensive stuff. And so I've been taking it home every week and it's right here, ready to go. We also have wine and um, and uh, olive oil out there also. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's My, just Glenn, what? It's a couple of cabinets. It's, it's not that should be, and there's three cabinets, got, so they, it shouldn't be a problem to pick yeah. it up. Okay. It's all in cabinets. Right. And the, and the cabinets belong Mike to Mike Real here. Mike Real here, and I'll go ahead and uh, help out if anybody uh, wants uh, some help to move the stuff. Thanks, Mike. Okay. So, Jay, I, have, I want to congratulate you on having had a great year, and I'm really looking forward to next meeting's uh, demotion party, and I'm going to be sending out an invitation to everybody. Um, about the time of that we may start a little bit early that day but we'll we'll see but you'll be hearing from me and i hope you're all going to share in this and celebrate jay's year and as we install carolyn as president and ken perrine as president-elect i think it's going to be a lot of fun so the past presidents have been working really hard on this so you, i think you'll have fun as long as it'll be five o'clock somewhere kathy It'll be five o'clock somewhere for sure. <laughs> All right. I, I must say I've, I've treasured the year, but I've certainly found it exhausting. So uh, I think we can be proud that we got around obstacles we would not have predicted. So thank you all. I guess my last meeting is adjourned. Hey, Pat, what are you wearing? Thanks, Jay. Uh, uh, I just wanted to point out for those of you that are still here after adjournment that uh, the DH DHL gets a, a package from Guatemala here pretty quickly here. So I now have 500 of these Guatemalan face masks on my uh, dining room table. This is one of them. And so I'll, I'll get the, the fulfillment list up and let people know that those of you who have pledged uh, what, the, what, what we have on hand and then see about hawking the rest of these. So. Uh, at any rate, we've got a whole batch of this. Uh, there are five bags of 100 face masks a piece uh, and pretty uh, nifty. They're Guatemala. really beautiful. They're really beautiful. Beautiful fabrics. And are they very comfortable? Yeah. They're, yeah. they're just kind of like a... Elastic. Uh, the, uh, for me, the, I've been using kind of one where I, 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 I pull the scrunchy ties tight on, on ones that Kathy made. These are loops over your ears, but they're, they're not bad. And they're kind of a, a, a definitely kind of a little beak shaped thing here. Um, so that's kind of the form factor of them. So uh, we'll see how they go. But I was just putting together the fulfillment list here and, and we'll get the word out to you folks so you can know how to 
uh, depending on whether you want to make a, a 501c3 donation, we have a vehicle to do that, or if you just want to send me the money for it. So I'll get that out to people. And then I'll start hawking the rest of them with our area four crowd, because these will be part of the Lake Otetlan uh, food security fundraiser. So at any rate, I'm a wash in, in face masks. <laughs> Thanks a ton for doing that, Pat. Inspirational. Sure. $10 a mask. Pat, I forgot to add. Oh, there. Uh, I'll, I'll get the word back out to, to, to let folks know. Uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, I'll, there's been a little more uh, cost in the shipping than, uh, than he anticipated, but a negligible amount. So they're, they're uh, $2.18 per mask or $26.12 per dozen, I think, something like that. So I have these numbers in this spreadsheet that's a little too tiny to read for me uh, <clears throat> clearly, but that's, I'll get that word out to folks. By the way, Pat, one last comment for you. In addition to the John Shirley Award, I found in my mail another uh, Paul Harris Award for you. Oh, So oh, thank nice. you for your ongoing contribution. Thank you okay. much. All righty, good fun. Right, and folks, way to go, I Jay. Any other questions or do we stand adjourned? Okay. The year's in the bag. See you next week. See you next week, oh, everyone. See you next week, Jay. Jay. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. See you. Yep. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank we'll you. See you, Jay. Congratulations.